Welcome, Dan Runner. The glory days of the video game arcade might be a long way behind us sadly, but they certainly haven't been forgotten, and in this video I'm going to take you back nearly 30 years to those heady days that played such an important part in our youth. The year is 1993, and we're all present at one of the greatest times in coin up video gaming history. You won't find any fruit machines, penny pushers or Frick's prize machines here, these are the true arcade classics that lit up dingy smoke filled rooms, sat on stained carpets and delighted audience whilst they drained people's pockets of all their spare change. Names like Sega, Irem, Namco, Midway and Capcom have become synonymous with gaming and so it would be no surprise to see them feature heavily in this video. This is where many of today's popular franchises started, multiple innovations took place and the genres that we know and love today were all formed. All these classics play every bit as well today as they did back then and deserve to be remembered as true classics in the annals of video game history. The theme of 1992 was definitely scrolling beat em ups, so those of you who aren't a fan of that genre will be pleased to hear that this craze started to wane off a bit as we went into 1993. The theme of 1992 was definitely scrolling beat em ups, so those of you who aren't a fan of that genre will be pleased to hear that this craze started to wane off a bit as we went through 1993. In fact, given how following years would see fighting games take over and start to dominate arcades instead, 1993 looks like somewhat of an anomaly on the arcade map with its wonderful mix of different genres. Ok, so this year didn't see many big innovations, but we did start to see the shift from 2D to 3D and many more new powerful arcade boards made their debut too. Now let's stop talking about 1993 and see what it had to offer in more detail. It's fair to say that Japanese company Turplan are best known for creating awesome shoot em ups with titles like Truxton, Hellfire and Flying Shark under their belt. So to see them produce a scrolling beat em up is quite surprising. The game is also quite notable for a few deviations over its rivals. Firstly there are the huge sprites, secondly a much wider selection of characters to pick from, the absence of weapons and most importantly the lack of generic bad guys repeatedly attacking, with the game playing more like a constant boss rush. This alone makes Knuckle Bash well worth checking out. Part of Technosoft's short lived venture into the arcades, you probably won't be surprised to learn that Hyperduel is a spin off from their ever popular Thunder Force series. A pretty standard horizontally scrolling space shooter, this game also borrows another popular Japanese trope by featuring a ship that can also transform into a robot. Destroy enemies, grab power ups, fight bosses, and you know the rest. Hyperduel was never released outside of Japan in either its original arcade form or subsequent Sega Saturn port. It might not be original, but the usual techno soft quality makes it well worth playing. Probably the best way to describe Namco Cyber Sled is as a 3D remake of the classic Atari 2600 game Combat. You control an armoured hovercraft as you zoom around an arena trying to take out your opponent, be they human or computer controlled. There are walls and objects you can hide behind and you have both machine guns and missiles at your disposal. The former overheats if used too much whilst the latter is limited, although these can be replenished by grabbing power ups when they appear. Aside from the 3D graphics, the most notable feature is probably the dual stick controls. Alongside SNK's Fatal Fury, Fighter's History was one of the first arcade games to blatantly copy the phenomenon that was Street Fighter 2. In fact the game was deemed so close to their own that Capcom actually sued Data East for copyright infringement, which they subsequently lost, leaving the floodgates open for more clones to arrive. If you've played Street Fighter 2, which I'm sure you have, then you'll know exactly what to expect, as the gameplay here is virtually identical. One notable aspect however is the appearance of Daytree's mascot Karnov as the end of game boss. Music 
Some three years later, American Laser Games were still finding new ways to repurpose their expensive Mad Dog McCree hardware to create new games. We'd seen quick drawing cowboys, put bullets in gangsters with Who Shot Johnny Rock, and even evaporated aliens in space pirates. So now it was back to something far more generic as we hit the beat as a good old American police officer. I'm sure you know the score here. Shoot the baddies as they pop up on the screen, try not to shoot the civilians, and don't get shot yourself. The movie quality visuals here make things a little more interesting though. Vertically scrolling shoot em up that Sue Gun was sadly the last ever arcade game to be published by Tower Plan before they went bankrupt. It was also one of the first examples of what we now know as the bullet hell shooter. For those that don't know the difference, in a game of this type you have to learn not just the attack patterns, but also the bullet patterns, because the screen fills up with fire and there is no way to dodge them on the fly. Batsuga was later ported to the Sega Saturn and served as the inspiration for many more similar games, including Don Pachi, Ikaruga and Radiant Silver Gun. Heavily inspired by buddy cop shows and films like Tango and Cash and Starsky and Hutch, Lucky and Wild is a crazy combination of a driving game and a shoot 'em up that puts the characters at its core. As you race across the city taking out the bad guys, you can also watch the reactions of the two stars in the rearview mirror, and after each stage you roll into the pink cat's garage to be entertained by a group of wannabe playboy models. The bright colours and brilliant use of hardware scaling really help bring this game to life and it's right up there with the best arcade games never to hit a home console. If there was an award for the most crazily titled arcade game, then Ninja Baseball Batman would undoubtedly win it. But make sure you emphasise the space between the last two words, because this has absolutely nothing to do with the DC Comics superhero. This is a cartoon styled scrolling beat em up for up to four players. We are on a mission to recover various artifacts that have been stolen from the Baseball Hall of Fame. Each of the crazy characters has their own style, and you meet some equally bonkers baddies along the way. This is a truly wonderful arcade exclusive. Given that In the Hunt was produced by Irem, it's probably not a surprise to learn that many describe the game as R-Type Underwater. Ok, so there are some similarities, both the horizontally scrolling shoot em ups with a great power up system and some wonderfully creative bosses, but I do think that In the Hunt has more than enough originality to stand up on its own. In fact some people have said that it seems like a game from the late 80s in its design, and I would agree with that, because it does have the kind of uniqueness that you'd better associate with a game from the previous decade. Whilst there had been numerous attempts over the years to cross an afterburner style 3D shoot em up with a flight simulator for added realism, none of these had originated in the arcade. That changed when Namco released Air Combat, which not only pulled off the combination successfully, but also introduced true 3D polygon graphics into the equation too. In fact the game ended up kickstarting one of Namco's most successful franchises, as it was followed by a stream of sequels and spin offs on home formats including the Ace Combat games, with the last title arriving as late as 2019. Whilst Acclaim were lighting up TV sets with their highly rated Alien 3 run and gun game on home consoles, Sega were taking a very different route with the same license in the arcades. Alien 3 The Gun does exactly what it says on the tin, shooting aliens with a big gun. Never before had we seen such gigantic weapons bolted to an arcade cabinet. Sega even took great care to model them closely on the ones found in the actual film. It's fair to say that Alien 3 The Gun does nothing original, you're just blasting away as many ugly Xenos as humanly possible, but it just excels in every single area. One of Capcom's most popular scrolling beat em ups of the era, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs is based on the cult comic book series Xenozoic Tales. The main things that set this game apart from Capcom's other offerings at the time are the dinosaurs themselves, who aid the enemies in attacking you and also serve as bosses. And then there are the bonus stages that take place in the titular Cadillac. 
Aside from this, the three player side scrolling gameplay will be more than familiar, and although being far from original, it does what it does very well with a great range of moves, cool characters, and awesome weapons too. Atari's original Star Wars arcade game was a huge hit for the company, and it's still quoted as being one of the best coin ops of all time. So when Sega acquired the Star Wars license in 1993, they took note and created a game that very much paid tribute to Atari's offering. Based on the original trilogy, Star Wars Arcade also features 3D graphics, this time in the form of full shaded polygons, as opposed to the wireframe vectors of the original. In the game, players pilot either an X-Wing or Y-Wing in a first person or third person perspective as they battle the Imperial forces across the galaxy. The original Raiden was by far Saibu Kaihatsu's most successful arcade game, and was rightly hailed as one of the greatest shoot 'em ups ever made. This made the sequel inevitable, and they duly delivered with the originally named Raiden 2. This one very much follows the mantra of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as it takes the near perfect vertically scrolling shoot 'em up action from the first game and turns it up to 11. So we have more levels, more power ups, more enemies, and even more impressive visuals. Raiden 2 is exactly what a sequel should be, and a real must-play arcade game. In a rather interesting change from their endless stream of scrolling beat-em-ups and Street Fighter 2 variants, Capcom decided to combine the two and create an arcade wrestling game that stars everyone's favourite mayor, Mike Hager, from Final Fight. Known as Muscle Bomber in Japan, the game features your usual array of flamboyant characters and hard-hitting wrestling moves, alongside some more outlandish special attacks. Forming one of these almost guarantees a pin count. The ultimate goal is to win the championship belt, and then defend it against the rest of the roster. When talking about groundbreaking racing games, it's impossible not to mention Namco's Ridge Racer not just as an arcade game, but also as a launch title for the Sony PlayStation. Alongside Sega's Daytona USA, it represented the first time we had seen a racing game that actually looked like real life, and changed the genre for good. The game was apparently created as a celebration of Japanese driving culture, and the whole Drift King phenomenon. The huge success of Ridge Racer saw a multitude of sequels and spin-offs, with the last one being released as recently as 2016. Follow up to Arch Rivals, Midway's hugely popular NBA Jam took the popular sport of basketball and turned it into an outlandish and cartoonish multiplayer free for all. Rather than full NBA lineups, this game took the top players from each team and takes the form of a two on two hoops contest like you've never seen before. Players have all the usual stats like three pointers, rebounds, speed, and dunks, but can also activate outlandish special moves to turn the tables. These include dunks that set the net on fire, Superman-like leaps, and amazing bursts of speed that leave the other players for dead. Co-starring S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Nick Fury, the Punisher allows you to play the game as either one or both in the excellent two-player mode. Interestingly, there is very little difference between how the characters play. They both have the same moveset and only very slightly in their specials. Along the way, various weapons can also be utilised to improve your striking power. You are working towards a final battle with the Kingpin, but along the way you must also defeat other villains from the comic books such as Jigsaw, Chester Scully and Bushwhacker. This is a very underrated brawler indeed. Developed by Sega AM2 and designed by Toshihiro Nagoshi and the legendary Yu Suzuki, Daytona USA was the first title to debut on the Sega Model 2 arcade board. When it was first shown to the press in the summer of 1993, it was hailed as the most visually detailed 3D racing game ever. It was a huge success and promptly ported to Sega's new 32-bit Saturn console in 1994, as a rival to the PlayStation's Ridge Racer. The huge success of the game saw several sequels follow, and Sega even released a new entry into the series as recently as 2016 some 15 years after the last game. The first Mortal Kombat game was a massive success for Midway, 
and so a second game soon followed. In this sequel you can now play as 12 different characters as well as a host of secret characters too, and these include all your favourites like Scorpion, Raiden, Sub-Zero and Liu Kang. They also made these characters more unique from each other, increased the amount of special attacks available including those infamous finishing moves. These weren't the only improvements either as there is also big upgrades to graphics and sound to make them even more realistic than before. And that rounds up my look at the greatest arcade games of 1993. Are there any others that you can think of that should have made the list? Or do you disagree with any of the entries that I did include? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Ozzy B, Dos Gamer Man, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to host selected content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.